plastic. It's been our mission here for the last couple of episodes, and today we're gonna try to produce some plastic because you can use it to make some really cool stuff. Now, this one here was made in real life, but what we're going to make inside of the game is a bunch of ladders, a bunch of transit tubes, pumps, a lot of really useful things, and as we can see here, we've got the petroleum production underway. All I gotta do is actually build a facility for the polymer presses. Now, there's a couple of cool things that we already have set up here. We've got a bunch of hydrogen in play, so that will be useful when I go and feed that to the thermal nullifier up here, which will be used to cool equipment throughout my base. One of the things that I want to cool is going to be some polymer presses. So, we're going to put this polymer press somewhere down here, and maybe a couple of them, and then we're actually going to ship away from that, so then we can, you know, transport that over here into the storage facilities or whatever, and then use it to build cool plastic ladders so that we can move around much faster. We can make some plastic tiles because they squeak a little bit as you walk on them and they go really fast. They don't necessarily squeak. I don't know, maybe they do. But, so I'm looking forward to that. So, let's go ahead and get this thing underway. I've changed my mind about what I wanna do over here a little bit. We're just gonna cancel that and I'm just gonna set it up so that the plastic production just happens, it happens right here. Right under the thermal nullifier. We could just put it in the exact, in the same room because there's no reason not to. So the thermal nullifier uses up petroleum and 240 watts. However, it does give off a little bit of carbon dioxide, quite a bit of heat, and then it gives off quite a lot of plastic, some steam, and a little bit of carbon dioxide. So that'll all be pretty easy to handle over here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually just going to dig this area up. So Libraham over here actually had a comment that was about just using different a method for you know your 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 ranch, and what he's doing here is he's really comboing his storage and his ranches because obviously the critters don't necessarily need to move everywhere, so it's a little bit hard to see. There we go. We can zoom in onto it here. You can see how he's got all of this storage that he's able to use, and then he's got all of his little hatches above that. That's kind of a creative idea, so that it isn't wasted space. I suppose you could also kind of grow inside of there as well, because that's kind of what they got going on down here. Yeah, I could see that working. So right now I have all the hatches on the right side. So that's sandstone. And then on the left, I'm pretty much just getting rid of these guys. So I tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and wrangle the, my normal hatches and move them over to the left. Not 100% sure why I'm doing this, but I am. Okay, sage hatch, polluted dirt. Okay, there we go. You know, uh, the core in this base kind of sucks. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a small effort here to put some more paintings in. Sonia had a pretty good idea. It says, you can actually put two bristle blossoms to suck any excess water with germs and put that right next to the printing pod because they have light on it. So that's pretty cool. I could probably just do that. That's a good idea. Instead of using this over here on the right, which is Honestly, it's, it's just pointless, because I, I don't have any good reason to grow pitch pepper plants at the moment. <sighs> or I tell you what, I'll do this. I'm just gonna put a reed fiber in there. There, I'll just put a little thimble reed over there, and that'll take care of it. Let's see if this guy over here has any automation to it. No, no it doesn't. But I can automate the feed into it. So whatever pipe I put in there, I can put a gas shutoff valve. That way, this thing doesn't have to keep getting colder and colder. Wow, look at how much natural gas is in there. And it's not running because we don't have an outlet over there. I got you. These two exosuit docks were getting damaged because they were being driven by this pump. Now this pump right here, when a, when a duplicate would run through there, they would let off just a little bit of carbon dioxide, which sometimes this pump would pick up and run over to this exosuit dock. That's why it was getting damaged. So all I did is disable the path through there so that, you know, those don't end up breaking. Just kind of interesting to see how, you know, no matter how much oxygen is in that spot, it just happens to be the, the way that that room is laid out to where, you know, it could potentially pick up a little bit of carbon dioxide and pump it through. See that little bit of carbon dioxide right there? 20 grams, that's all. But it's enough to damage things. Here's my plan for just digging this out. It's like we're doing a quarry over here. Just keep going, little bit by little bit. Making a funnel into the earth. Wow. Hmm, I've got some water over here, and this water is quite hot. What that makes me think is that there, there might possibly be a geyser over here. 
I think it's worth going up a little bit higher to find out. I will need quite a bit of abyss light to build when I'm trying to build over here on the left, so let me just dig this up. And as I do this, I should be able to see what's up there. I'm going to move Bubbles into an exosuit engineer position, but then I'm going to put her, her digging right back up to high. Same with Gossman, but I'm, I'm again, I'm going to play around with their priorities a little bit here so that they're still specific to what they want to do. So one of the things that I've seen over here in the comments over the last couple of videos is that I don't think people realize that this is a challenge, and this challenge started with some unique conditions. I'm able to assign my duplicates to any job they want at any moment in the game. I also started with the maximum technology, so I have everything unlocked from the very first cycle. That's why I'm quite a bit farther ahead than what you would expect at cycle 200 here with as many duplicates as I have. So the challenge of this base here is to automate everything as, as much as possible. Not so much to play the game legitimately and try to get to this point. It's, you know, what would a base look like if this is where you started? And, you know, that's what it's all about. Hey, let's take a look at the decor. Yeah, it went up a little bit. We got some better paintings. Uh, they're not all that great, but they are a slight step up from where they were. Ah, if we take a look at the temperature here, it's not bad. It's uh, just about 28 degrees Celsius inside of here. And that's pretty decent. Some of the other areas, no, they're not too bad. It's definitely hot, but it isn't scorching at this point. So, And it doesn't seem like it's going up. I think insulating those pipes made a big difference. Well, they've made a little bit of a difference, I should say. In that <laughs> the, the base would regulate itself probably to about 40 degrees Celsius, which is still a little bit too hot. Aha! Yes! My first stone hatchling. Obsidian would work. Sedimentary rock would work. Igneous rock. Mmm, got a lot of polluted oxygen showing up again. I'm gonna have to nip this in the butt because, you see here, that's a lot of slime lung. Where'd that even come from? Okay, enough of those critters. Let's focus on this plastic. Okay, so what do I want to do over here? Well, all right, so here's what I want to do. I want to take some polymer presses. I'll put, I'm just gonna build them right here, right there, right there, and then beneath that, I want to make sure that I have a door that can be automated. So I'm going to put a mechanized airlock. So right there, there, and there. And then above that, I think I want a mesh tile. Now the reason I want a mesh tile is because it's going to give off a little bit of water and I don't want that water to freeze right there, which may still happen. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Now plumbing should be relatively easy because I'm just going to, you know, pipe it right on in. So I'll just do that number. And continue the theme of insulated pipes though. So I want to be able to pick up and ship out anything that's in this area. So I'm just going to make it that wide. And then I'm also going to make the room that wide as well, which is pretty big. But, you know, I might end up putting more stuff in here, depending on what I want to do with it. Not to mention the amount of, you know, radiators and things like that I might want to cram in here. So there's no reason to keep this small. I guess one thing I could do here is just plug this system into that one. That way I don't have to ever run on this little manual generator. It's not much effort, but something. All right, granite is laying around here, so I am going to switch these to granite liquid pipes. Ah, no, insulated. Crap. Oh, whoa, 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 oh man, no, stop. Sometimes that just goes crazy. Cancel everything. There we go. Yeah, see how much faster they're building this now? Other. <clears throat> Otherwise, they were running all the way down here to pick up some stone. It was just crazy. So, you can see that just turned from like several cycles into one cycle. As far as how long it's going to take them to just, you know, build that stuff right there. Alright, so for the hydrogen that's coming in, it'll go over here and then up to the thermal nullifier. I have a shutoff valve right there. And I can put a sensor somewhere along this to where I kind of like turn it on or off. I could probably just put that sensor right there. Or maybe I put farther, put it farther back. That seems like a good spot. All right, so this is coming along quite well. Just digging this stuff up. You can see that we have a little bit of a gas shutoff valve here ready to go. I swapped, I swapped this over to a mechanical door, so it just goes quite a bit faster. Yeah, and it does use up a little bit of power. I kind of got power to spare. I mean, look at the pressure inside of here. This is natural gas, and there's a lot of it. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to build a clock sensor. There, that's as good a spot as any. And then I'll connect that 
to all of these little polymer presses. So as it's kicking out plastic, eventually that'll open up and it'll drop a big batch down. And then I can use an auto sweeper to convey that batch out of this area. Nice thing about it is this plastic will be nice and cold too, so I might be able to get a little bit of cooling action from it as I convey it through my base. <laughs> oh, bubbles. Really? You, you missed a spot right there. Ooh, we can see the thermal nullifiers working. Um, yeah. Nice and cold. Negative 54 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to need to add another gas shutoff valve. And that'll be right here. And then above that, or somewhere in this area, I'll, I'll put a thermal sensor. Look at that, liquid carbon dioxide. That's how cold it is. And I have just enough plastic to where I can make a nice high pressure gas vent here. So I can use a little bit of a gas valve right next to this, you know, just to let some hydrogen into this area. Oh, look at that, negative 70 degrees. It's getting even colder. Super, super cold. The thing is you can't really see how cold it is because, you know, once we get to cold, <laughs> everything below that, you know, doesn't change until you get to absolute zero, which is kind of a long ways away yet. Alrighty, so let's let some hydrogen into here and <laughs> yeah, make it super, super cold. All right, so I've emptied out this hydrogen loop, except for the part that's charged up before it goes into the farm, and then the part that's over here in the radiant pipes. So the rest of this is slowly filling into here, so that can run. For a little while here, I had turned this thing off, uh, and I was just running on coal. So that's actually gonna be disabled now. Let's see here, I'd like the ladder if it was right here, instead of right there, that way it's more symmetrical. And so I'll move that clock sensor just to make it look a little bit nicer. So if this is above, hmm, negative 30 degrees Celsius, is that practical? Then we'll run it. Uh, okay, so here's an idea. Uh, I'm having problems refining enough m metal currently in order to build everything I need to build. So I'm gonna put a metal refinery down here and that metal refinery is going to use some of the crude oil that I have that's already available. All right, so if we look at the equipment, this here should be able to be run and I should be able to convert quite a lot of stuff. All right, so this metal refinery should be able to run and then feed the oil refinery if necessary. And then I have a, lip, a different method to get to the oil refinery if you know that isn't running. I might be able to automate it a little bit more than what we see here, but I'm kind of curious to see how this would work as it is. That means I have to enable that one over there. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Awesome, so check this out guys. I have a cool steam vent right up here. So that's going to be a nice source of a little extra water because as we can see down here, uh, my water source is starting to go down a little bit. There is a little bit of water that's lost in this process here. Plus I'm running an electrolyzer, so some water is being lost to there as well. Not a whole lot. We've been able to make it a long time on just kind of the starter water that you can start with. Not to mention I'm getting a little bit back from the lavatory as well, so. Altogether, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad really. And some of that is also ending up in the food as well. So, you know, your base consumes water. You always have to find new sources of water. And I found a nice good one here. So I can actually take this, bring it down next to the hydrogen cooler, which is turned on again, crap and then cool it down and bring it into the base. So if I bring in metal here, I can have it refined from the auto sweeper. You know, if I ever get enough metal to actually convey something in this far. But once I get rid of that, crap, I did not mean to make that an airflow tile. Whoops. Matter of fact, it might just work out to where I can have a couple metal refineries inside of here. Hmm. So then depending on what the liquid is that's going into the oil refinery, I can turn on and off a shutoff valve so that there's always something available for the oil refinery to refine. I don't know, it's kind of a crazy combination of stuff, but it seems like it would work. <laughs> what I'm trying to do right now is just build up enough refined metal in order to bring the power that I need all the way over here to run this stuff. Or I suppose I could just use a, oh, a 
another generator, but then I'd have to convey the coal or whatever over there. Uh, I could do a hydrogen generator. It's not like I don't have hydrogen, but I've got so much power right here, just ready to go. All right, well, I've made some good progress here today. I was able to get this thing at least built, but now I do have to power it up, so I have to have a lot of refined metal. I might work on actually making just a couple metal refineries over here, just so that I can really start to process a lot more metal, because I do need a lot of refined metals in this base. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. I'll see you again next time. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.